Hello, and thanks for joining us for this session on transforming research environments with Service Workbench on AWS. Uh, my name is Paul Saxman. I'm a Principal Solutions Architect with AWS, and I'm part of a team of specialists with backgrounds in clinical research and informatics and healthcare innovation and IT. Uh, we support academic medical centers across the United States. Joining me today is Dr. Paul Aviak, who is an Assistant Professor of Biomedical Informatics at the Harvard Medical School. Paul and his team of researchers at the Aviak Lab at Harvard I investigate translational bioinformatics with a focus in federated research, data integration, and interoperability. Paul has an interesting and highly informative story uh, to tell about the history leading up to and the genesis of uh, Service Workbench on AWS, uh, which is an open source solution for researchers to procure and deploy research environments. So after I finish walking you through the rest of this agenda, I'll turn the camera over to Paul to tell his story. He'll also share with you the key features and benefits of Service Workbench on AWS. And in order to give you a full picture of how researchers can leverage the platform, uh, he'll also give a demo of how Service Workbench can be used to provision and access research environments in a matter of minutes. And finally, to wrap things up, I'll be back to share with you how you can get started using Service Workbench on AWS. So now we'll let Dr. Paul Aviak take the stage to share more background on cloud computing for research, uh, which led to the development of Service Workbench on AWS. Thank you, Paul. So I'm very pleased to be with you today to present the work that we've been doing in uh, co-development with AWS on how to enable and having access to the cloud computing in the context of the research. First, I'd like to uh, explain what we do in my lab at Harvard Medical School, where half of my lab is software developers, where we are creating biomedical discovery infrastructure. And the second part of the lab is uh, uh, postdocs and students working on uh, finding the taxonomy of disease, finding subgroups that enable to find potential treatments um, for uh, uh, disease. And so, this slide, uh, in the context of precision medicine, maybe is summarize everything that we do in the lab, is by the same way that Google Map managed to put all the different layers of information about a specific geographic location where you have the satellite image, postal code, the traffic jams, and all the transportation in real time, what we managed to do was to put together all the different layers of information, clinical data, genomic data, the exposition, everything centered not by GPS coordinate, but by the patient identifiers to be able to go from one layer to another. And this is very important in the context of precision medicine to be able to uh, uh, find uh, new uh, treatments. And so the, the whole technology that is behind that is to enable us to uh, scale. And so Doing all this, what, we've be, what we discovered is the importance of scaling, and that's why the, uh, using AWS enable us to, have, to create all this environment. And then why would a, research, uh, a researcher would use a public cloud when the on-premise cluster that he has within his institution are freely available? Those are counted in the endeavor cost, but for the investigator, why would he start to use the cloud? And so the main reason we see behind this is the scalability, the elasticity, the security, where at the end it's much more secure to be in the cloud with all the security components, the compliance, and then the scalability of the innovation of what can be done that couldn't be done uh, uh, when you buy your on-prem uh, servers. And so the, what we've been doing is to create an, an environment that enables investigators that are producing data related to clinical data, genomics data, imaging data, so we're talking about petabytes of data, that to be able to analyze it where the bottleneck is to have the environment on-prem to be able to analyze all these uh, elements. And so by pushing all this data into the cloud, where the key element is those three things joined into one place, the data, into very secured environment with the analytics next running next to the data. So that the whole idea is by pushing all this data into the cloud, 
enable us to be able to do new discoveries that was not possible before. For example, the alignment for the on TopNet project on 200,000 uh, samples is definitely not possible to do on on on-prem cluster today. And by this idea of lately uh, having all the data into this secret environment enables also other investigators to be able to ac have access all the all device uh, data use agreement and security rules that enable someone else to be able to use access the same data with his own analytics into the same secured environment. And so what we've developed in my lab is uh, uh, the picture platform, a new environment where we store all the clinical and the genomic data at scale, so all the various layers of information into the high performance data store of picture with an API, picture API. We created a search portal that enabled to search for all the clinical and the genomic data that enable investigator to access all this data. Then there's the clinical and genomic data can be retrieved and accessed through the picture API and analyzed directly in R or Python using the client on the API into an analytic portal. What we had before was the uh, installing Jupyter Lab on uh, uh, on-prem or on the cloud environment using R Studio and Hell, the Vine store, but there was the big issue of scaling. So this was definitely a bottleneck. The analytic portal couldn't scale. And so that's why we needed to have an environment that enable us to scale for this analytic portal. And so this model of having a discovery portal and analytic portal, we've been using this across many projects, including the uh, uh, GIC project and with, uh, started, that started with the Green uh, Genomic Research Innovation Network that enable investigator to access into a central discovery portal and an uh, analytic portal across multiple pediatric institutions across US, US, the main pediatric institution, Boston Children's Hospital, Cincinnati Children and uh, CHOP in Philadelphia using the picture API for patient level and aggregate counts throughout this environment. But we needed, and that's one of the projects where we needed something to scale for this analytic portal. And so on across many different funded projects where you, for the NIH, the, uh, the uh, uh, under, uh, under Diagnosis Network project, for the TopMed uh, Biodata Catalyst, and many other institutions where we needed an analytic portal that scaled and not just using the own installation of JupyterHub. And all those projects in a very important consideration because we're talking about patient data into very secured and compliant environment. That's how looking at the project at Boston Children's Hospital or at Harvard Medical School, that's where we needed and we reach out on AWS HIPAA compliance that enable us to store PHI on the cloud in 2016. We got a FISMA, a provisional ATO last year, and we definitely need to scale in the context of going next year to FedRAMP. And we got also a high trust uh, certification at Boston Children's Hospital that to enable all this is to, to make sure that we can store and scale all the data within the cloud on AWS. But in all those projects, we, there, there was this consideration of the analytic portal that needed to be much better than just JupyterHub. And so that being said, two years ago, exactly, when we could travel and I have very good souvenir at reInvent in Las Vegas, 2018, and going through all the booth stand across all device services, and this was my first uh, reInvent, uh, and I, that's why looking at all the components and services that already exist, and there was this idea of if there was a way to put all those elements together that we would need for research, this would be something uh, awesome that would be uh, extremely valuable. And that's why I discussed I discuss with many uh, professional um, uh, AWS architects throughout uh, reInvent, on what would be the best way and starting to draft a, a way of uh, representing all those different components 
because at the end, what I really needed is to democratize the access to public cl cloud computing for teaching for all the students that we have across all the different courses, but also for the research and with a full billing control. That's one of the key elements because the cloud can be very expensive if you, you don't have an auto stop and, uh, system when you are not using it. And so that's why we need, really needed to have putting all those diff different components. And so what I had in my wish list and I went across at reInvent two years ago was how can we put together for multiple funded research projects but that would enable us to be also used across multiple uh, um, uh, teaching courses where we needed to manage a computing environment. But one of the key elements, it couldn't work on just one account because the billing, the way the billing works, as everybody knows on AWS, where you have the billing inside the account, where with Google Cloud and Azure, where the billing is outside the account, makes it easier in the context of being able to go from one project to another. And so that's why with AWS, in the context of research, there was something missing where we would be able to go from one account with one project funded that could be linked with one security component and to have all those different billing control on the, the various accounts and to enable this. So this was a very strong requirement of how can an investigator come with his own AWS account and uh, benefit from uh, this own environment or how to be able to provision all those AWS accounts for different research teams very easily. So this was a very strong requirement um, that I had. And then to be able to have access to all those scalable research environment using the power of SageMaker instead of having with that has its own environment with the Jupyter Notebooks and not having to install and maintain the Jupyter Notebook environment with Python, R Studio, all the power of TensorFlow for deep learning, and then the scalability of Hell Volume Store that enable to have extremely large cluster on EMR. And all this needed to be on uh, something very important as an academic on an open source Apache 2 license uh, and not into a proprietary license. And with a full detailed billing control, with a, a, a very secure environment, because this needed to uh, follow HIPAA compliance, hard trust, and then later FISBA to be able to pull this, this platform into all those uh, compliance audits. And, so, and all this, of course, with a very nice user-friendly user interface. And so all those were the requirements and at the end, uh, discussing with academic contacts at uh, Harvard Medical School, uh, Chris Noonan, uh, taking a beer at the end of uh, reInvent two years ago, that's why I told him, well, that's what I want. I, w I have all these different pieces together. Um, would it be possible to, uh, to do something? And then he came back to me a month later saying, hey, there's something that we can do with the um, innovation team at um, at AWS, and so we started to pull together, putting all those services that already existed, but into one new solution. Uh, that at, the, at at first we so we had to find a name code for this project, and so my six-year-old daughter loves Pufferfish, and then uh, she told me that this project had to be called Pufferfish. So that's why that's the internal name name code that we had at first. Then uh, the trademark office uh, didn't like that name, so we had to change it to another name. But that was our internal name, and so Pufferfish was great. We were, and uh, within a few months, we were able to have uh, a first version that we used in the context uh, of a class. Uh, but the downside of Pufferfish was that this pilot we, that had SageMaker. EMR with Hell Vine Store install was that the services and the, the, the different elements of deployment workspace were hard coded, meaning that they were really embedded, which was great for the pilot, which was great for the class that we had, but didn't enable us to 
scale and to very easily add yet another type of workspace within their environment. And so that's how this class at Harvard Medical School, Computational Enabled Medicine, we use Profifish in March. And in March 2010, uh, 2020, so this year, what happened is that's where the um, uh, COVID started. And so through this class that was during one month, the first week was un was in class, and then that's where we the, the pandemic uh, started to explode, and we decided that the second week and all the following week within this month for this course that we'll go fully remote and definitely having proof of fish uh, definitely help us in the context of enabling us to be able to continue the teaching uh, uh, of the students. And because they didn't run the compute on the laptop, they were running it within the environment. And after the proof of fish experience, that's where there was uh, this moved into the, the new name, as you know, because the, this is the name of the platform today that was released, uh, Service Workbench on AWS, and with an outstanding work uh, of uh, AWS to definitely help us in the context of pushing this and having this on the a truly open source Apache 2 license and w one of the key elements of being hosted by AWS. So this is not yet... Um, a, a, an academic project on the side, this is an official AWS solution that is maintained, which at the end, for me as an academic, is the most important. And so what is the, one of the key elements of, and the key change uh, of, of uh, 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 AWS Service Workbench is the fact that it's relying on AWS Cloud Formation for the account provisioning of the, the different workspaces. So anyone that has a CloudFormation template that wants to deploy a workspace of doing something that he wants some investigators or student to do, it's just as easy of adding this CloudFormation template directly. And this CloudFormation template, as you know, that enables to have infrastructure as code, will automatically deploy the micro environment with all the configuration of the scale of the environment that is needed for the project. And then using the power of service catalog that enables to deploy the CloudFormation template with the full government control, with all the guards well, to enable to have something extremely secured. And so Service Workbench enable to have a self-service free-click on-demand service where anyone can launch very quickly the approved research uh, environment. So for example, here's SageMaker that enables something scalable, repeatable, and so under the fair principle, with a full transparent view of the spending for the user for himself, but also for the administrator, administrator at the level of the project or overall. And so the service workbench enables to have administrator controlling the various workspaces across many different AWS accounts and the ena even enable the AWS account management by creating new accounts or so the provisioning of the account or adding existing accounts under this environment. And under the hood, how does it look like where you have one master account that has everything being on a CI-CD pipeline that enable to very easily uh, develop and deploy uh, things as needed and or where you and hooked with uh, IMI roles, two different research accounts that enable to do the deployment of those different environments as needed. And so now I'll show you a live demo of this environment. And now I'll show you a demo from Service Workbench running at uh, Harvard Medical School across multiple projects and accounts. So first, as a user, I'll show you, I'll start by showing you how it looks like from the end user's perspective and perspective, and then also how it looks like on the admin side. So I'll first log in as a user using this browser, and the end user will be able to see here studies or workspace. There's no research workspace. So first I'll show you how the end user will be able to very quickly, with just a few clicks, run and create and run his own workspace very easily. So the admin has approved that this user and also the project admin because with there's multiple level of access control 
that this user can run one of the four uh, workspace and EC2 Linux, uh, SageMaker, R Studio in an EC2 or an EMR cluster. So let's take the SageMaker notebook and I'll call analysis uh, for pediatrics. And on which project? So this user has been authorized to access and there can't be any here. So analysis pet, for example. So project ID. That way, this user has been authorized to run the, uh, the analysis on either one of those two projects. And you will see how this is linked to, very to different Amazon accounts. So either a teaching or a project B. So I'll select the project B. And then what size of the configuration of the SageMaker? In this case, I can, I'll choose a T2 to extra large, but then I could have been also approved to, to run it on a P2 extra large. And you can see the cost per hour of the virus and the environment, including the configuration of the auto stop idle time. In this case here, 60 minutes, where 60 minutes of doing nothing will just stop the environment to avoid the extra spend. So by just entering those fields, I can now create research workspace and that's how this uh, le investigator or student will have access and it takes six minutes to launch it the first time. During the six minutes it's the behind the scene the service catalog launching the cloud formation template that under the, the guardrails of, of service catalog that enable to the deployment based on this configuration. So while we wait for this deployment, I sh I'll show you how it looks like on the admin side. So now I'm logged in as an admin. I can see all the various workspaces across the environment. And then the, the way everything has been organized is by a different AWS accounts. Because the billing and the security compliant can be different from one account to another one, so that's why there's, in this example, in this deployment, there's four different Amazon accounts that has been integrated, three for research and one for teaching. And those accounts are either added as if you have already an existing account where you can just add it within this environment, or you can use as an admin you can launch the account for the end user for him to have access to it. So the, the account provisioning here, create AWS account, is very easy and it just launch AWS uh, organization behind the scene to be able to deploy the, diff the various Amazon account. And then I have here the various Amazon account uh, that are joint and put together into different indexes so you can have that's for the billing one index linked to multiple Amazon accounts and then I have the link with the various projects so I have in this case f four different projects that are with the different Amazon account and different Amazon billing and I can choose who are the various project admin that I enable to be to have access to control those different projects. So you can have, for example, for the teaching, I have the teaching assistant that can be added here to be able to control and have access to a, a sub uh, element of the admin panel just for the various research project. So that's the organization of the accounts. Then I have all the users in the platform and one line per user linked and have been authorized to various projects for example, here Arno, I can he's accessing the project called Aviac Lab, but I can easily give him access to another project. For example, here Project B, save, and then he now has access to two different projects uh, to be in, in his launch list uh, within the environment. And then what I can do is to be able to device walls, and based on the walls. That's why you can see uh, who with this role will be able to launch what type, what type of workspace. So as also as an admin, you can see that the approved workspace 
are the four ones, the one that the end user saw, where there's the EC2 Linux, uh, SageMaker Notebook, R Studio, and then the EMR. And there's here a fifth one, EC2 Linux, that has Windows, sorry, that hasn't been imported yet. To be able to show up within this way, window is a question of adding the CloudFormation template within a folder in the, uh, in the console. And once this has been added, it can be imported by the admin of the platform. And, one, and when something is imported, you can choose the device configuration. Uh, because you will choose per type of role what configuration what is he allowed to use. So for example, students might not have access to all GPUs uh, to avoid huge costs. So you have a full control of who can launch what uh, based on a complex access control matrix that can uh, uh, be used across many of the environment that we can have. And so, for example, here the EC2 Windows is not approved yet, so I need to add the configuration and then I'll be able to test it, to test with data, and then before making it available for the end users. Something also that is available is the studies. So the studies is linking the data to the uh, workspaces and in the showing you the example of open data that are publicly available by AWS that enables you to make the link within those publicly available data set, for example TCGA, some of the publicly available data set that are, can be linked and added directly by selecting them and then select on which computing environment do you want to use, for example an EMR to launch the hell via store linked to the TCJ data is as simple as making the various selection and then choosing what kind of uh, storage that you want to do. So now coming back to the uh, 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 environment still pending, it has been six minutes where I told you it took around uh, uh, seven minutes. So the, for the end user there's the what he can add is the SSH keys and API keys to have access to the environment and then the uh, have a full control he'll be able to see the exact cost that has been on for this user on the this works uh, or across all device workspace that has been run. So the detail of the uh, 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 the compute and the environment everything is available in one place and now you can see that after 6 minutes this environment is available and so connection, SageMaker Notebook and now here connect. This will run the, so all this uh, here is running live where you can see that the instance notebook is now available and you have access to the whole power of the SageMaker integration with all the machine learning examples that are available outside of the box. So you have this environment where I can either use run uh, our notebook or a Conda notebook easily or even launch a Jupyter Lab uh, environment uh, if you want to have something much more detailed than just the Jupyter notebook running into the um, this, uh, Jupyter Lab environment. And so this enables you to have access to all those predefined environment and just in a few clicks for your end user to be able to use all those elements. Okay, well, thanks, Paul. Uh, before we wrap things up with the session, uh, I'd like to share a few things that you can do to get started with uh, Service Workbench on AWS. As Paul mentioned, uh, Service Workbench is fully open source and free to download and install in your own AWS environment. Uh, you can find the code, scripts, and documentation needed to deploy Service Workbench on in GitHub, and since it's a rapidly evolving platform, uh, we highly recommend that you watch the repository so that you're notified of new releases and developments, including new work research workspaces and platform features. Uh, as an open source project, uh, we cer we're certainly looking forward to receiving your feedback, uh, feature requests, bug reports, and even your pull requests, especially if you've built research workspaces that are deployable uh, through AWS Service Catalog. Sharing these will help other researchers working 
in similar domains and may also help you with improving and, or generalizing these workspaces. Uh, and finally, uh, please don't hesitate to share your experiences with Service Workbench and AWS. Uh, as you've likely heard, 90% uh, of what we build is driven by what customer tell us, customers tell us matters. Uh, so your experiences with Service Workbench certainly matter to us. I'd like to quickly thank all the people that have been involved in the development of Service Workbench and AWS. Uh, there have been numerous contributions from people from within AWS, Harvard Medical School, uh, as well as from numerous other research collaborators. Uh, this list is certainly not complete. However, me and the rest of the Service Workbench team I wish to sincerely thank everyone that has been involved in this development. Um, as you can see, we have several other healthcare sessions being offered here at reInvent. Uh, topics from the healthcare uh, executive outlook uh, to fireworks on AWS to using AI to automate clinical workflows, uh, just to name a few. Uh, please take some time to review all of our other sessions and join those that are of interest to you. Uh, so thank you again for joining us. Uh, we certainly look forward to hearing from you about your experiences with Service Workbench on AWS. Uh, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to us during the Service Workbench question and answer session or via the Service Workbench and AWS uh, repository on GitHub. And one last quick reminder, uh, your feedback on this session is also matters to us. Uh, so if you can, please take the time to complete the session survey. Uh, thanks again and take care.